All right, I'm giving you, I think, a better idea each time of what uh, our game is uh, entirely. I'm talking the way we approach painting, and I'm, I'm very excited about the responses I'm getting. Um, so if you can just uh, think for a second uh, uh, back to the um, start, the lay-in of the Boston School style painting, or you may as well just say my kind of painting for the time being, because you know I'm, I'm a whole generation removed from the Boston School. I couldn't possibly make a, a, a legitimate claim apart from being a, you know, finding that in the ways I work, I'm so much like the Boston School more and more without even trying to be. I'm not trying to be, I'm just trying to find most efficient methods for painting what I see in front of me. And keep on remembering everything we talk about, uh, possibly with the exception of today, when we talk about composition, that's just flat out applies to everybody. But, um, but most of what we talk about really is about when you're painting from life, when you're painting what you see in front of you, uh, from life. So um, have that in mind as we speak. Uh, Brad asked this question, what exactly is an exit? And I, I'm saying it refers back to us, uh, the, the lay-in, uh, which I don't know what number that was. Uh, what, what is its function in visual language? Is it a way of implying context? So uh, I'm just going to go right to uh, images and uh, let's just uh, go through some points about exits. Uh, these were the at least one of these was used in that lay, and I think possibly the bottom and top one, the left and right, you know, the two on the left are, are actually the, um, the uh, ones we used in that lay, -in. and I referred to exits in the lay, and how important they are in terms of situating the subject in the page. So what you're seeing there, if I can get my arrows going again, I've got to figure out how to make these arrows bigger, I guess, but you see that passage right there at the base of this dress, the top picture right there, that's called an exit. It's where a dark meets a light, and they, and then they hit the frame as they're traveling along. They cut out through the frame as if they were going to go on indefinitely, right? Here's the top one. There's one doing it here. There's a there's a definite one here. There's another one here. And then you could always this is a, a, also one. Okay, so even weak ones can be called exits, but the most important ones are the strong ones, the ones that go out with high contrast. But you can see how that exit exits the frame, right? So yeah, nothing around anything. There's no you go around a spot like this upper corner here, and you would say. Oh, you don't exit the frame there, you exit it here. Your eye jumps from, from those. Some people, there's a whole long, complicated thing that some people try to do with that, and I don't bother. It's a visual thing to me. Like most of this, uh, put them in places that actually make sense, feel good, and, and yes, of course, in any way need, as needed to, uh, to give you Brett context, uh, depending on whether you mean what I mean by that. Um, so uh, now looking at this one, you can see this is possibly the strongest exit, probably is. Every, all the other exits in this picture are actually, relatively speaking, weak. Um, these things go up here, these darks that look like they would exit, except they're muted, right? They're, they're, they're picked off by this middle tone here. And, and so this here, the, this line here, could be said to exit, barely does, barely does, hardly any exit at all. That's conceivably an exit because there's an orange, a, green, a green note here and setting against a redder one here. But this is a clear exit. This is a soft exit. This stuff here, that's a little bit of an exit, and I guess there's some stuff here that you call exits. In a picture like this, it's very obvious where these, that these exits are, these, these top ones are very strong, very strong. This is Paxton. By the way, that was Tarbell. Bottom one is Benson. This one's Paxton, and you can see Paxton here is working in the direction of a Vermeer, right? But very strong exits in key places. Now, he has a lot of exits in this picture, every time you go out of a picture. Um, you know... Play with that. Go use a viewfinder when you're looking at the stuff you're about to paint and go forward and go backward. I mean, the first thing you want to do is make sure your center of interest is the, is the size in relation to the frame you want it and is as high and low and left and right as you'd like it. But then notice that aspect of how it feels, how, because all these exits actually do a thing. They tie you to the frame. And there's a very good way to do it, and sometimes they're just obnoxious as heck. Um, so, um, yeah, be, be aware of it. Um, Whenever you have verticals, uh, like you're seeing in the Paxton over here, long verticals, that's the line of the frame. So the frame itself, if this were a gold leaf frame, that gold line is another vertical. So you have to pay attention to those kinds of ideas as well. Anyway, but you see all the exits in these pictures. You see what I mean? Now, I could just stop here, I think, and just say that's it. That's what exits are. Um, but I just wanted to show you a few more uh, and give you a great sense of, of the way they're used. This is Jerome. So you have this big dramatic line exiting the picture up here strongly, less strongly down here. This thing here, this great long line dramatically exiting the picture. It's a massive drama flying through this entire thing, right? Um, 
there's a point made by Millet uh, about about expressing the thing, making a thing look like it goes on forever, could go on forever. Uh, that's true. This actually is very gives you very much the feeling like you're right in the middle of that space, and it could come right around you and be behind you as well. Um, so, but each one of these things, each time it, each time a dark, uh, a contrasting, uh, two values meet in, in contrast and go out of a picture, out of frame, out of the frame. That's an exit. So exits here, exits there, a couple exits here, and so on. This is actually technically this is an exit over here. Would you believe? And you see how it causes the uh, this, this whole line is a little bumpy little edge on this frame, but this is a dramatic one that actually. So it forms a, a, a location that begins to, to continues this great line. You see the variation, this line here. And so this exit goes right through to this one, very much the way this one does in continuation, right? Even this one here lit up just a little bit as if it wanted to get involved, you know, all the way over to here and so on. So it's interesting that these exits actually are all on, on, on the main line, isn't it? Beautiful stuff. Now this is Degas. That was Jerome. This is Degas. And now we're talking about... Uh, uh, you know, the sort of breaking the rules, slice of life thing where you get people halfway out of pictures and that sort of thing. Degas is delightful with it. Uh, he doesn't break the visual rule, the rule of being visually interesting and visually balanced and that sort of thing. Uh, but, uh, but he certainly does disobey previous ideas about what objects you do. There was a time in composition where it was all about what the, what the people did. And at that point, it was then they have to be in the middle of the picture, then they have to do this, then they have to do that. When you get to the point where it become more purely visual, uh, you can do a lot more things you couldn't have done before and still be right. When you're visually right, you're right. When it feels good visually, not when the story's right. Now, this, if you're doing pure illustration, then that may not be the case. It's going to be up to you. But, um, yeah, but this is just fascinating. Of course, the, the fixture in this picture, the main feature is this, is this person. So this guy is far less important, at least to Degas. So the centering thing is still going on. And yet this group taken together, you would argue, is, is legitimately the... The, the, the figure grouping that is the subject, right? And so look what he's doing, right? So he has all this bland space over here. You know, here he stopped an exit. Here he had this dramatic exit going dramatically out. I mean, like hard edge, hard edge. And he decided, I can't be having that happen. <laughs> and so he actually got rid of one of them, the hardest one probably, and he left that weak one down there, which doesn't really connect to anything. So that's an exit down there, there's one. So these are exits, 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 exits. Exits. Am I moving my pencil too fast? My pointer too fast? Uh, I talk about soft exits sometimes. Um, like this, this, this thing exits here and here, but it does it so softly, doesn't it? So you don't have to have hard-edged exits. This one, too, I mean, these are very modest. They're not harsh. They're not high-contrast exits. But whatever contrast you have, the most contrasty one is your most significant exit, obviously. So it would be this one maybe even relating to this thing. And these guys, this is weaker, this is weaker, et cetera. These are more strong right here. These two verticals are much more strong. Um, so, um, but, they, um, but they don't intrude on the uh, space. They don't, but that's another story. Let's not get into any other conversation about that. So each time it happens, you're talking exits. Each of these are soft exits. This is very soft. This is probably the hardest one of the entire place, isn't it? This one right here. Um, and then, of course, notice how when you don't have exits, your eyes don't stop in any of those places. But when you do have exits, they talk to each other. This exit goes straight across to that one. They relate to each other very strongly. And all exits, anything that does that is talking to all the other guys that do it, okay? It's a set. Think in sets, okay? And you'll do fine. Now, Millet is the guy that said, and this is Millet, all three of these are Millet. He's the guy that said, uh, picture should look like it goes on forever. And he does these horizon lines that's, that rather resemble that. Uh, it give you that great feeling of that, like the indefinite sense of space going way back and certainly going way left and way right, like it, like it would go on forever. Of course, he's got a good sense of the um, aerial perspective uh, in all these cases. You know, the higher contrast in the foreground, the lesser contrast in the background, the richer colors, higher contrast, busier, and the less so in the back. Um, but, uh, but exit wise, you see these are important exits, this one and this one. And uh, here's an exit. But this, this one here is an exit, and this is a fairly interesting and dramatic one. This is where you, when you combine a spot, so it, so it breaks the long, continuous line. See, this one basically has a continuous line. That's a very weak break there. Uh, but this one breaks solidly here, and you can begin to see its connection visually to, to in a line, right? Uh, by the way, 
it's not my job to to try to figure out exactly what he meant, but Degas and others criticized um, Millet's composition on a number of levels. And um, in the in the world of the main line, this is it's hard to it's, it's sometimes hard to understand what he's up to. Uh, it, he thinks seems to think about it in a very different way from what Jerome does, for example. But that's still, as I said, another story. So soft exit, softer, softish exits. But this is a definite, definite exit here, and here, and so on. And that's that's all we mean by it. Just notice where they land and what they're good for, right? But it's very much a matter of, of tying you to the frame. So if that's what you mean by context, then you'd be right. I love the uh, the exits of uh, of the architectonic Vermeer, you know, as a funny expression. But it is really having to do with the whole thing looking rather architectural. Um, I mean, like he's really designed a square in, in a way that's, that feels almost mechanically uh, uh, like architecture. <laughs> so for lack of a better word, all design is architectonic in a sense, but, but the more purely visual ones that do these kinds of things are so well organized that they could be a building almost. Um, I think of them that way. Anyway, really dramatic exits, look at that. And then this lesser, softer ones, and then and it, but there's a second one here. So top you have these three. And then down here you have a weak one, a less weak one, strongest one in that area, and then another one down here. And then this whole area is without exits, right? So the whole area, no exits. The exits are entirely up here and entirely sort of in here, okay? Just notice. Um, and, they, and, they're, and they're rather pleasing in relation to each other. And again, notice how it gives you context. It uh, holds you in the room, rather. Uh, nothing's floating. The attachment to the frame may be, uh, you know, as important as anything else uh, that way. So again, so the Vermeer on the right here, the, the dramatic sense of several exits right here, whole big lost areas all the way over through, and then another exit over here. Um, anything here is, I, if, that's, if that light shows, maybe there's more to this picture, but there's certainly not much by way of an exit you can feel. When you look at things a really big hole, you can feel what you're doing. You're out here and you're definitely out here. Uh, these spots are unrelated to that. I shouldn't say that. I don't mean, I mean, it's not about exits in those spots. So here again, here, here, and over here, right? Very, three very sweet little exits. And to some degree, these are exits, but, but they're lesser. But that's all we mean. Nothing, don't get excited. That's all we mean by it. Enjoy thinking about it and wondering what in the world that means to your pictures. And um, by the way, I want you to know that this is the third time I have done this one, Brett. So uh, I, I keep doing things like not having myself in focus. I really hope this one works out <laughs> in this dim light. Uh, anyway, see you next time. Subscribe, share, uh, uh, like, and all the rest, and uh, do appreciate your attention, and I hope it's helpful. All right. Thank you very much.